Everyone, welcome back to the Trailer Line channel. This is Richard and Ross. And today we're going to be going through one of our Trailer Line model book stocks of 2020, DocuSign. Um, and Ross, once you get started, and we'll, we'll talk through the chart, first of all, because this is really one of the best performing stocks, especially coming out of the March correction. Okay, so here's DocuSign's chart. And you can see um, we're going we're gonna to take a look at this base just prior to the March correction and follow through that uh, occurred on the NASDAQ April 6th. So what I want to point out here is, for starters, this is clearly constructive looking action. It's nice and tight. Um, it holds its moving average. It, it acts in a clearly organized manner. It's mm -hmm. far from wide and loose. You know, even when you get a little breakdown here um, through its 50 day moving average, it's 65 exponential, picks it up. You get a hammer close back above. I'd like to point out we've got super constructive action here prior to this breakout to new all time highs and solid move higher. I mean, it respects its 10 day moving average, hardly right. closes it down a day after it breaks out. But anyway, we've got, you know, we're looking at big blue versus small pink on the way up over here. After this big gap, I mean, you see volume clearly trails off. Everything is super tight. Mm -hmm. so we got a little pocket pivot here, the whole nine yards. So when the stock finally breaks out, uh, you know, it's, it, it's, it's worth taking a shot. This is going to attract a lot of uh, a lot of buying. I think um, in retrospect, what we'll go back and look at and see is volume was a little light. And I would also point out that as constructive as all of this action was, it was a little bit faulty in so much as um, the base is not really proper, even as a flat base, which can be a minimum of five weeks, whereas everything else is seven. Let's just mention that. Um, reason being is th this base starts here um, and goes into new high ground mm -hmm. well before five weeks. Again, you've got less than five weeks before it breaks out. So even though you've got a, a longer consolidation there, it's not exactly proper. And then is if you want to take a look and, you know, it's much easier to, to uh, look back and realize hindsight. these things in hindsight, but volume wasn't really there the way you'd want to see it the entire move higher. And then you can see it clearly picks up to well above average as it's fallen. And it, it does act constructively here and continue to um, fight the market. It's yeah, it, it's moving averages, but eventually the market just pushes it over. Um, however, and let's point this out, what would scream at you that this stock is still um, a leader and potentially uh, a basketball underwater as our buddy Ropa likes to say, um, is this relative strength line. While the market's still correcting here, the, the market or the S&P 500 is this black line. You'll notice the S and, or I'm sorry, purple is the relative strength line. We've mm -hmm. got, so we've got the relative strength making, starting to break out and make highs while the market's still making lows. And also this relative strength line goes into new high ground um, before the price breaks out. And uh, I'll notice many, you know, during a, a market correction like that, that is, that is one of my favorite things to see. I'm constantly looking for that. So if you've got a liquid stock with phenomenal earnings and institutional sponsorship, that's the sort of look, thing I'm looking for is it looks like the market's going to follow through. So that's, that's key for me. Um, so anyway, even if you uh, interpreted this as constructive and, and bought, you know, maybe you uh, made some money, maybe you got shaken out, but you had, you had plenty of opportunity to uh, work your way out before this final gap down here, which um, would have got you if you, if you weren't paying attention. Um, nevertheless, um, as, as we were just dis discussing, the market eventually builds a right side. It follows through on April 6th. Um, and it really tightens up there. I mean, it's kind of a pseudo cup and handle, but obviously it's not proper at all just because of the nature of the correction. But yeah, I was actually watching it and this is one of my first buys near the fall through day as it kind of forms that tightness. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, right right after that in the handle uh, yeah, type yeah. formation there, that's kind of one of my first buys. Absolutely. That 
as an anticipatory buy, I'm I'm with you there. That's where I'll often put on at least a starter position, maybe add on strength as it breaks through. I'll cheat and even draw a super short-term declining tops line over the top of this handle. And if the volume is clearly big, it's not, it looks like it's picking up from 50% and you know, now it's 20%, but is it going to keep coming? You know, it's one of those days where I look up and it's, bit, you know, thick triple digit volume and it's going through that uh, little declining tops line. I won't hesitate on a liquid stock to um, put on, you know, a little more early than late if I can. So in any event, that works for a little for bit, a whole two days. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we ultimately, you know, so we undercut and close below the 65 one day, not by much. And I'll always give everything at least a day to recover out on a closing basis. What I'll do if we were to have closed below that low the following day, I'd kick it out. But anyway, you recover the next day. However, you're again, you're stopped out. Um, you're you, from this buy point, you wind up stopped out again. Um, the market finally follows through. And the reason you're keeping law now, let me explain to you um, risk management, position sizing, um, managing your emotions and the ability to, you know, you're keep in mind, you're, you're managing your financial capital, but by managing your financial capital, you also always want to keep in mind your mental, psychological, emotional capital, you know, once. So keep those losses small, keep them small. So then you're not, hesitant to go back the third and fourth and possibly fifth time. If you've been, you know, let's say you've got shaken out here um, and didn't get, you know, and didn't get very far. And then you possibly you get shaken out again, working your way in here and you get a little heavy, like I might've and wind up getting shaken for the second time by that time, you know, they could, the, the power of three, everyone, you know, like Bill used to say, they'll either wear you out or scare you out. Right. You just don't want to buy it back anymore. It's your, your emotion. You know, you look at the ticker and it, it turns your stomach. Right. So in any and that, event, and that's when it works. Finally, that last absolutely third time. the right. third time when everyone's been shaken hard twice and everyone's tired of it. There you go. Third time, it just breaks out and goes and never looks back short of a quick touch of its, you know, 21, 23 day moving average there. And sure enough, that's what happens. The market follows through volume and you can see here, you know, you've got the huge volume. Mm -hmm. um, now, if you were just watching the 65 day, the problem is that's, I'm going to tell you that closes well below the, the 8% if you're employing that rule. So if you're, you know, living and dying by that rule, you're, you're getting pushed out regardless. Mm -hmm. um, maybe you didn't get too crazy here and you've only got a third of a position on and it can come back to here and it doesn't bother you all that much. Maybe you give it a day and leave it. <laughs> I, I talk the other way. Cause I, that tends to be me. I'll tend to be too heavy, too early and right. be forced out and be buying it back. However, you know, I, I'm pretty good at keeping my losses tight. Um, it's become an automatic reaction now at the, I'm not going to say that I don't get upset on bad days because I absolutely do. When I say upset, I mean, it, my emotions are, you know, it's not a happy day for me. You know what I'm saying? So I, I can, it's, it's within the realm of normal. However, you know, it's, it stirs me up inside like anyone else. I'm not, I'm, I'm far from powerfully strong. The only one I know that that seems to be able to sit there like that based on data, except for Bill O'Neill might be Ray. <laughs> right. Right. So anyway, yes, he's, he's, his discipline is, is absolutely phenomenal, but that's, I digress. So here it is, time number three, the market follows through, it breaks out. However, if you've you know kept your losses tight, maybe you made a little money, maybe you lost a little money, maybe you're ahead. But regardless, it shouldn't be enough to keep you from trying to work your way back in to this breakout. And you can see, as I was pointing out, the volume really picks up as it goes here. Right. Pulls, even though it's above average, it declines on the pullback. And then you've got huge volume again here. And it's clearly picking up above average. And you can see all of the pink until here remains below average as it rides up. Basically, it rides its short-term 10-day moving average up, giving you spots to add along the way as it you know, tightens up and pokes its head out to new highs and it drifts into its short-term, you know, that it acts that smooth. Um, you really can't ask for better than this on right on right. uh 
on one of these big liquid leaders that break out like this, anything that respects its 10 day and 23 day moving average all the way until it ultimately, you know, well, here you've got a break of its 23, but until it actually tops for that, for that point, it, it never violates it until just about the end. So yeah. That, and uh, yeah, I just wanted to point out uh, one more thing during the March correction, it really respected that 200 day moving average. I think that also lines up with uh, a previous all time high, although I'm not sure. And also this, this is, this is a stock Absolutely. that was also on my radar because um, I think before this entire move, it had a, a monster earnings gap up on, on huge volume. And we might see that later on in market Smith, but uh, once again, that's just kind of, kind of a sign that institutions really want a piece of the stock and, and a correction like this, even though the price action is really emotional, really wild, um, it handles it pretty well as we see from the relative strength line. And yeah, then it just goes on this really monster run until the strong uptrend. Yeah. And I mean, uh, what do we got? So here we go. So again, it, it kind of makes stair steps, it, little stair steps along the way, all the way. So we finally get a shake below its, um, you know, 21, 23 day moving average. Not by far, um, and honestly, unless you only only started buying stock on on this ad, mm -hmm. um, you're you know you're in good shape. Even if you give it till it's fifty day, which right. is you know not not a horrible thing to do at that point. Um, if or and I would be to be honest with you, the second day under its twenty three day moving average, I'd probably be out of this. Just looking at the spread between you know the twenty three and the fifty, and either mm -hmm. wait for it to you know maybe buy some back on the fifty, or wait for it to recover um, its twenty three day, or you know um, reclaim its uptrend that that little short term up. You know, just to again to play it safe. But that would only be if you know if I had added here. In any event, so it, it ultimately holds its 50 day moving average. It acts extremely constructively again. However, it gaps up, breaks out to new all time highs. Um, and we can take a look at a weekly on, on Market Smith in just a bit. It looks, you know, not too bad here, right? We got a breakout to, to all time highs. It still closes well off its lows. Even here again, we fill the gap and we close well off our lows. It doesn't look all you know, nevertheless, comes all the way back in and shakes out below its 65 day moving average. Right. Um, this acts as support. You know, if you were to connect that red line across, it's no coincidence that it touches basically touches all of you know, all of the su price support you see across the way. Mm -hmm. And let me ask you a question How would Bill O'Neill interpret that really quick move up, which is kind of a changing character from the more kind of steady progression? And it really gets extended from those shorter term moving averages as well. Absolutely. So, you know, at, at a glance, I'd have to look back. I don't think this is quite five weeks. So normally Bill would tell you that you don't get a climax run, a proper climax run directly out of a base. It's got to be something that's been gapping. And so maybe I wouldn't tell you that this is your classic, you know, if you were to <clears throat> open up the textbook and I don't know if we've got our largest weekly spread here or any. My guess is textbook that may not be considered a proper, you know, um, climax top. However, that is def. You're talking about a stock that broke out months prior from the 70s and ran to 260 bucks in, I don't know, a matter of how how many months is that? five months or so? Yeah, very. Yeah, short about time. exactly correct. Five months, so 20 weeks. That that's in that's a huge move. So. On the weekly chart, one side, you know, that big, um, I, I, I'd be honest with you, I, I mean, once it, once it failed on that weekly chart, I would most likely um, sell the stock and wait for it to build a new base again. Um, I actually, that, uh, let me take that back. Depending on where I own the stock, if I owned a bunch of the stock in the 70s, mm -hmm. um, this is still a very new stock. I have no reason to think that this won't build a new base and ultimately work again. Um, you know, even now, as we look at it, I don't, I don't know that DocuSign has topped. Maybe it did. Again, remember, we're in the, uh, the uh, interpretation business, not the prediction business. So right. even after we've got this climb, and this is definitely climaxy action, um, I think, yeah, I wouldn't say 
based on the weekly, I don't know where, you know, Monday through Friday, on the weekly, I don't want to say Bill is, is perfect, but it wouldn't be unlike him to sell into, you know, to at least sell some stock into that big mm-hmm. move higher, just because there's been such a huge move in um, a short period of time and that, you know, and then try and buy that back at a cheaper point. I don't think this is something you would, because it's not necessarily that um, textbook climax top that you'd sell your entire position unless, you, you know, I try, you, you know, you want to try and get through four, six, eight quarters of earnings and really give this thing a chance to work for you. So right. you've got to hold at least a, a core position and use its 200 day moving average at this point, which, um, you know, by the end of this year, that's 200 day moving average was almost caught up to the bottom of this base, you know, or this area, which is shown to be huge support. So that's, um, it'll be interesting to see where it is roughly what level that that's this area in there will be important, I think. Yeah. And, uh, and it looks like it, it's tried within this base to overcome 250 a couple of times. And it just recently, um, since, since, uh, the end of uh, last year and the start of this year is tried one more time. And now with this most recent um, pullback in the, in the general market, once again, I think it failed to overcome that point. So it'll be interesting to see if it can finally push through that on volume. So uh, why don't we go ahead and, and jump into market Smith and talk about the current chart um, and uh, yeah, discuss how it's doing right now. Yeah. I mean, let's um, take a look on the weekly really quickly and we can see this, you know, now we can see that, Huge spike shooting pattern, you know, whatever, you know, I'm, uh, I'm sure there's three different can, you know, fancy candle names for that, the shooting, whatever it is, but that this big spike can close near the lows of the range. That's, that's never, but, and that's not interpreted as, as a good thing, even though it right. closes blue. However, it, we can see it. <clears throat> I'm not sure what moving average I have here on the weekly at the moment. However, we can. Uh, I remember on the daily chart, we'd ultimately held at 65 day moving average here um, mm-hmm. as it continued to base build. And even though we shook below again, that's where we had uh, pointed out the constructive action. So, you know, just as we go into the future, I still think, look, we've got a big week down um, on a big increase in volume. We can see here the blue, the blue weeks or the up weeks as we've moved up have been on below average and kind of declining volume Mm -hmm. so maybe a so what i'll do is i'll look back um it's it does for somewhat respect it's 200 day or this Mm -hmm. black this is the 40 week line i'm sorry Mm -hmm. um so we're getting close enough there and remember we were talking about support and i think this general area that you know end of december is where mm-hmm. the 200 day moving average was catching up so mm-hmm. maybe i would it would not surprise me and the stock would still be fine if it shook all the way down below it's i'm not this is not a prediction by any means however i always try to keep in mind you know would anything be wrong with docu if it came down you know um here let's put on a it can, it shook below its 40 week line to that mm-hmm. support area and then mm-hmm. you know did the ha- you know did the hammer thing back above and it's not going to be blue but uh, you get the idea um, mm-hmm. and the stock is still fine right so let's say you get the close in the upper end you shake down to support um, that's a that's a possible scenario maybe we just catch catch support right on the black line again so I've noticed in this market we seem to have a lot of volatility a lot of shakeout and undercut um, and it. It it does that work, yeah. You know, it all of this where we may you might have said maybe a little bit wedgy. It's not perfect, you know. It's not terrible. Um, we're picking up, but you've really technically only got one um, up week there on up volume week of above average volume here, and then finally we're getting it. So I just keep that in mind. I wouldn't be. I, I'm pretty good at being too early trying to buy stuff back. So I just keep that in mind. I'm not gonna. That's not my prediction. I mean, right now we're who knows where we stop on the daily, maybe it comes to 200, maybe it hits just it's 200 day, not it's 40 week. Those are all things that I'll keep in mind and uh, just interpret how it acts along the way. And um, I'll be watching this black line. That's for sure on, you know, the, the 200 day moving average or the 40 week um, mm-hmm. moving average. I'll be watching that closely. Typically I'll keep trend line alerts above and below. 
and uh, I'll be keeping an eye on the intraday. And if the group is doing well and it looks like, you know, everything is lining up, the market is by, you know, looks like it's where it should be. That's when I may start to put on a position somewhere around $200 or that, you know, that, that 200 is a, $200 is about that support line. I wouldn't, ideally, I'd love to see it shake out below the 200 day moving average finds, you know, maybe a little bit below 200 and then hammer back above and start working its way higher again. That, that seems like it would really clean it up to me. Let's put it to you that way. Yeah, absolutely. And I like the, the 185.36 swing low there about the middle of this base. I love the hammer action there. And um, yeah, it looks good. Um, we'll see how earnings come in in, in two weeks. We've got uh, earnings come up, coming up in 14 days. So we'll see how it reports. I mean, looking down, I think we'll cover the fundamentals from last year in just a bit, but you've got triple digit earnings, sales near 50%, after tax margins huge, great estimates for 2021 and 2022. So this fundamentally is nothing wrong. It's just about finding um, finding a good point to get in that's low risk. And the, the technicals just have to line up with um, the fund ownership increasing and all those high quality funds owning, owning it as well. Yeah. I mean, you can just glance around even after tax margins, except for a blip down here. I've been accelerating the last three quarters, you know, from estimates to actual numbers and you know, the massive increase in sponsorship, the quality of sponsorship, it's, it's, that's not, there's no question there. There's in terms of fundamentally, this is, a, <clears throat> excuse me, should be on your watch list at a bare minimum. Now you've got to watch closely to see how it acts at critical levels. All right. So now we're here back on the trade line model book page and you can feel free to download your free PDF, which will, which will be linked down below in the description, but Ross talk, talk to me about the fundamentals and also the overall uh, computer enterprise software group, which has really been, uh, it was one of the leaders in 2020. Yep. So for me, that's always a, a huge thing. Once you you know, you're in a powerful uptrend is, are, are you looking at not only a leading stock, but is it a, a leading industry group in a leading sector? And this right. for sure is, was it software across the board was a super powerful sector um, and docu, I, what do we have to, is that qualified as enterprise software? Yep, application it is. software, information technology sector applicant. Mm -hmm. Regardless, um, because that has such a huge, you know, direct correlation to a stock's price, I absolutely want to know that I have have that at my back at, at a bare minimum. That big picture is always very important to me. If I don't have a, a top sector with you know confirmation of other stocks in the group with high relative strength and big earnings that are also acting well, I'll look elsewhere. Um, so we've got that. We've got that there. Um, moving on, and we I know we um, covered this a little bit on on the chart section. And uh, well, it's got very strong earnings. I mean, quarterly earnings growth uh, backed by solid double digit revenue growth you've got here. And, and also the annual earnings were very, very strong as well, which I know uh, Bill looked for as right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, uh, yeah. And you can see to have growth over five years and it's textbook growth, we could look back. I, and when I say that, it, I believe it was just straight up growth. Um, you know, there was never a dip uh, along the way. Yep. And we can see here picked up consecutively the entire time. Mm -hmm. um, and then we saw those estimates going forward. They're still the same as when I created the model book here with, uh, with the boys um, remain the same a hundred. I mean, that, that's ridiculous. We, you know, at this point we've seen a, a lot of, Estimates revised down and revised down big. These haven't budged since the right. end of the year. So right. I noticed that. Um, forget return on equity. I mean, return on equity solid. We talked about um, after tax margins have been um, accelerating for the prior three quarters. Um, and, you know, I don't have it listed. I, I need to actually add it that I don't have anything about um, institutional sponsorship here. So I don't, we don't have it on the screen, but that is um, the pickup in institutional sponsorship and the quality of institutional sponsorship is another huge important factor that I consider. And it, you know, it stands out. If you look at it on market Smith at a glance, um, you can see the, the huge increase from, I think it was low to mid digit, you know, hundreds into the 2000s as far as number of funds. And there was maybe five or six um, yep. MarketSmith 
uh, flagship funds in there. So you can't, like like we were saying when we were discussing the chart section, you really can't ask for um, better in terms of fundamentals. This has got to be on your watch list. Absolutely. And Ross, what do you think? A lot of people are uh, saying this is just kind of a COVID play, you know, um, but what do you, what do you think about that? And I don't know, I think in my view, I mean, the numbers speak for itself. I don't think companies are be get, going to be uh, going back to the old ways of mailing all these important documents so people can, can sign it, send it back over weeks. But yeah, what's, what's kind of your thoughts on, on all of that? I would say this, you know, as I continue to look at those estimates, this is what I keep in mind. I look at the estimates as we just discussed. They haven't been revised down with everything else, at least not yet anyway. Mm -hmm. um, I, we won't get into a whole long discussion here, but for a, a big leader breaking out of an early stage base, um, you know, Bill has a, a way that he will not, not often, not on everything, but if it's, you know, something that he considers a big, big leader to get an idea of where he thinks price is going. And that is based on earnings estimates, which he actually increases a bit because he says in general, these guys are tend to be on the conservative side. So I would say um, you got a lot of smart guys there that are, are looking at something beyond COVID to have, to have numbers that stay that big thus far right because i don't i don't think it's because they think covid's gonna you know they're gambling on a prolonged. staying around right right, right, right. so no I, I think that's great and a, a lot of really great little tidbits there from you ross um so i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did please go ahead and leave a like down below and subscribe if you're new uh let us know down below in the comment section what we can do to kind of make these uh, videos even better um we'd love to hear your feedback and uh we'll see you guys in future videos